So, Sarah, there's an ingredient I've noticed that seems to be second or third on the list, this sodium laurel sulfate. Now, I use this in the lab, and we're quite cautious about using it. It's quite a strong irritant. So what is it doing in my shampoo? The reason that it's in all these products is that it's very good at helping oil mix with water. That's how you can clean your hair and your body. But it is quite an aggressive irritant, as you say. Yeah. So prolonged use or prolonged exposure to SLS can damage your skin. SLS is used in soaps and body washes as well as shampoo. And to find out just how damaging it is, I'm going to leave dilute SLS on my skin for several days. So this is completely painless. I've heard that. But before I start, Sarah's testing the rate at which my skin loses water, a good measure of how healthy it is as a barrier. The water loss from your skin is nine grams of water per meter squared per hour. Nine is a level you'd expect for normal, healthy skin. We'll repeat this test at the end of the experiment. And if I'm losing more than nine grams then, it means it's bad news for my skin. OK. Next, we dip a piece of gauze in SLS, cover it, and tape it to my left forearm. I'll do this every day for the next three weeks, putting fresh SLS on my left arm at bedtime and leaving it against my skin overnight. Three weeks later, I'm back in Bath for an expert opinion from Professor Richard Guy. I haven't actually been examining this very much. I've just sort of put on the stuff at night and, and left it. Mm. But looking at it in the cold light of day, it is red, isn't it? It's quite red. And it's Indeed. looking quite inflamed and scaly. How damaged do you think it is, though? Let's make another measurement, shall we? So if you can just hold it. At the start of our experiment, my water loss reading was nine. Straight away, I can see it's now much higher, so my skin is losing more water. This number is going really through the roof, isn't it? It's much, much higher, yeah. If we were to remove completely the barrier layer of your skin, the value would be somewhere around 80. So you've gone up to 33 nearly there. So I am halfway to having the top layer of my skin completely peeled off. That's correct, yeah. Well, I've essentially given myself eczema here. It looks like eczema, it feels like eczema. We've done experiments exactly like you've performed on yourself, but in a much bigger cohort of individuals. And we've seen exactly the same types of things. And so to the second part of our washing cycle. After using harsh detergents, our skin can feel dry. And so we put on moisturizers. What are they doing? Time for my other arm to get some action. I'm going to do another experiment on my right forearm. I'm going to use a very normal, widely available moisturising cream. And I'm going to moisturise just the top bit of this right arm here. And I'm not going to moisturise the bit near my wrist. I'm repeating this routine for three weeks. Now, I'd expect a moisturiser to make my skin moister. In other words, my skin should be losing less water where I've put the cream. But in fact, the figures for the skin I moisturised and the skin I didn't are almost exactly the same. 